All right. Alexia, what do you got? All right. What's your shape? What's your electron domain geometry first? What's the uh, trigonal bipyramidal? What was your shape? T shaped. Did, did you not have the two lone pairs? Two lone pairs. T shaped. Anybody not have that? You want me to go over that one? Okay. Uh, all right. All right. So again, let me go over this. So if you have this, you have 7 plus 21 is 28. All right. So I take my CL. I'm going to put it in the middle. F, F, F. I'm going to use... 24. So I use 24. I have two lone pairs left. Boom. Boom. Two lone pairs. I have AX3 E2. AX3 E2 is five, three, five domains. Five domains is automatically trigonal bipyramidal. From there, you have to figure out what the shape is of AX3 E2. And you would tell me it's what? Anybody? Anybody? What is it? And then what? What's the shape? What's the shape? T shaped. All right. What is the angle? And what is my hybridization? SP3D. Okay. All right. Good? All right. All right. And the last one that we have is ICL4. I think that's what we have, the last one being. Some of you have already done it. That's great. I'll work on it while you're working on it on your own if you're not done yet. All right, so I got five times seven. Three, six. You've done every one that you could possibly have done to this point. I had to put it in brackets. Sorry. Didn't put it in brackets. I always forget that. All right. Put it in your brackets. Yes, go ahead. Don't do it for anything outside of a tetrahedral. Um, electron domain geometry. Right? Basically, the only two that you'd really have to do that for are ammonia, water. After that, they're not really, there could be a question about it. There could be a multiple choice where it gives you four different things like water, ammonia, um, something that could be linear and say which one has the least angle. 
So you're like, oh, I'm Ted and Angel, and if you knew that part, that, that's what more of the question. Why? Because it's just pushing it down more. It's pushing it out. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's see. So this one actually was on the AP exam two years ago. Uh, predict the domain molecular geometry around three interior atoms of ethanoic acid. So you would get this, and it may or may not draw for you, but let's see if we can draw this. So we got a CH3. All right, here we go. We got this. All right, we're connecting to an O, uh, connecting to another C, and then connecting to an, okay, an O. Oh, I always do that. I'm sorry. I just automatically put in that double bond there. Why do I automatically put that double bond in there? C needs an octet, oxygen needs an octet. All right, you could add them all up, but you should be able to put together organic molecules based on what it looks like. All right, so uh, this, you got to really know kind of what the COOH is, and we'll, we'll kind of do that later. But we want to find what each of them, the interior um, atoms of ethanoic acid, what is their angle. So let's talk about that. So the first thing we want to do is uh, take this, and we look at this one right here. And we say, okay, well, if this was just by itself, this, let me change colors. This right here was by itself, what would it be? It would be AX4, which is tetrahedral. The shape is, shape is tetrahedral. All right, my angle is 109.5, and my hybridization is what? What is it? SP3. Okay, now let's try the next carbon. You understand what we're looking at? So this carbon would contain all of this, all of that. All right, so, all right, so let's try... So let's say, let me get a little green here. This is this. We're going to put this up here. All right, we're going to put that up there. All right. What would you have for an AX of this? AX3. Uh, no, not E2 because we're talking about the carbon. Do you see any lone pairs on the carbon? No. So we're only talking about this carbon here. No lone pairs. So at that point, we then is trino what? Everybody agrees, trigonal planar? And then the molecular geometry, trig plane, angle. All right, so it doesn't matter, it's not going to change, and my hybridization, hybrid one, uh, SP2. So that doesn't change. All right, let's try the last one, the O. All right, so I'll change colors completely. I'll get a fancy orange on here. Now we're talking about this O, which is combined with that carbon and that hydrogen. All right, first of all, what will be my AX model? E2. Oh, boom, I got that right off the top of my head, right? So what am I going to have here? AX2E2 is going to be tetrahedral, bent, angle. 104.5 is correct because it has a tetrahedral, so we got to incorporate the minus 2.5 times 2. All right, it's the only time you need to do it, only time. And uh, hybridization, SP3. All right, so that's not as daunting as it looks. And I'll tell you, two years ago, we scored in the top 
uh, 10% of all the kids that took it in the world. Like we had a score of 8.9 out of 10 on that exact question, all right? And the average score was a 2.2. We had an 8.9. That's a little bit of a, a di difference between a four and a five and a three and a four and whatever, okay? Yeah, you get all the breakdown of every free response. All right, okay, moving on. Let's go through that. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, Non-bonding domains are attracted to one nucleus. Therefore, uh, they spread out more than the bonding domains. The effect of non-bonding lone pairs, compressed bond angles, domains for multiple. So here's what we talked about. Remember, we talked about this tetrahedral is 109.5. Let's see if you can see a pattern here. Go ahead and predict what the bond angles are going to be for those. See if you can do that. See if you can predict the bond angles for those. You're going to have to draw them. you got to draw them. Got to draw them. I'll start drawing while you are drawing. All I want you to do is do this, like this, and then say the angle is what? Okay. Angle, and what do I got here? C O C L two. Always. Let me check. I got 4 plus 6 plus 14, 24. All right, yep, that works out. Oh, I got a. Okay, uh, who has an angle here for me? 109.5. What do you have for here? Uh-huh. What do you have for here? What do you have for here? All right. There you go. Easy stuff, right? Easy stuff. Let's make sure we got them all. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Trigonal planar 120. As George called out to the whole crew. All right. Yes. Couldn't fool you on that one. Couldn't fool you. All right. Any questions? Makes sense. All right. Uh, so they're a little bit different there. It kind of averages uh, 120. Uh, a, a molecule's polarity is determined by its overall dipole, which is a vector sum of the dipoles of each molecule. Who took physics? Who is taking physics? So this is easy. Vectors. Let's talk about some vectors. So if I was to draw CO2, maybe I can. I think we know that that just went awry really quickly. All right. I think I would know that, hopefully by now, I know that carbon dioxide is this. OK, now, who can tell me which way the arrows will go? Mayho? Um, All right, so I'm going to have this going this way and this going this way. Who is going to win? in a tug of war between oxygen and oxygen? No one. So what I'm saying here is we have polar bonds, but nonpolar molecule. So you can have polar bonds, but you can have a nonpolar molecule. Uh, that was just totally bad. Nonpolar molecule, I got that just just did not come out right. Non-polar polar molecule, all right? Polar bond, but non-polar. So the effective dipole is going to be nothing, all right? Now, if I take this, and I know, I think I can do this, right? Which way are the arrows going to go in this one? All right, towards it. 
All right, so if I sum these two vectors up, what is it going to look? Straight up, right? All right, so we definitely have a polar bond and a polar molecule. Polar bond and polar molecule. Yes? Overall. This is the overall. All right, and let me tell you a little secret I was told back in AP chemistry when I was a sophomore. All right, let me tell you a little secret about that. Uh, <laughs> I just had to put it out there to make you feel good, you know. Yeah. All right, uh, and see, and you could be teaching AP chemistry. It would be great. Yeah. But I did molecular genetic research for a long time, and that's very, very boring. So uh, uh, anyways, on that note is if I see... If I see a on central, I'm polar. And that saves me. All right, I'm polar. That saved me a ton of guesswork. I didn't have to do vectors. I didn't have to look at it. But if I see a lone pair, it automatically is polar. They're always going to pull towards the lone pairs. Now, necessarily, if it doesn't have a lone pair, it doesn't necessarily mean it's nonpolar, but that's a good clue. Okay? All right. So, vector sum, take a look. Got these two things. Bond dipoles are going to go out. They're going to go out. Bond dipoles are going to go in, like we said. Overall dipole, zero. Overall dipole is going to be, all right, that and that, which makes up, all right? Everything we just talked about. There it is in all. Uh, polar and polar. Uh, all right, classify each as a polar or nonpolar. And let me make, clarify this. I want you to do both. All right, do both. Uh, and molecule. Bond and molecule. All right, bond and molecule. Now, Somebody asked me the other day in the hallway, it might have been Raina and her friend. Was it you and your friend? Oh, what do we have? Oh, it was Shavitica. Well, what do we have? Do you get an electronegativity table on the test? No, you don't get an electronegativity table on the test. So at this point, it's a good opportunity to learn what the value of electronegativity of CL is. All right, it's a good, a good chance to do that. All right, so uh, let me take a look at this. Let me just draw this while I'm, while I'm over here. I got this, I got this, I got this. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, that just got, became a hot mess over here. What is going on? Oh, my Lord. All right, so give it a shot. All right, so what I got, I got 5 and 21 equals 26. I took away 6. I got 20 left over. I use 8. Okay. All right. So the bond for P and CL, what do you think? Which way is it going to go? Which way are these, the bonds, going to go? Out? Out towards that. Okay. Out towards that. Out towards that. All right, so we definitely have them pulling many different ways. All right, so the bond, oh, what, what is the electronegative difference between phosphorus and chlorine, by the way? We know the dipole is going to go towards chlorine. What is it? Why do you think one? I said for fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon. Four, 3.5, 3.0, 2.5. Can anybody tell me? Yeah, what's phosphorus is electronegativity. Is it? 2.5? 3? Somebody check. Somebody check for me. Come on now. Y'all need to check. This is why I said it. it's a good opportunity to learn your electronegativity values. Crazy, right? Yeah, I know. I know what it is. I'm asking you. <laughs> or Kimberly, I guess. Or Hashna. What? 
What is? For what? Phosphorus. What about chlorine? Three. All right, so we got a three and a 2.1. What does the difference have to be to be polar? A boy, okay, so we definitely have, I'm just making sure, we definitely have polar bonds. All right, what about the molecule? What do you know? Definitely polar. All right, well, how do I know? Well, it's got a lone pair. It's pulling them all this way. It's got a lone pair. Okay, BCL3. BCL3. All right, BCL3. Okay, so that we're definitely going to have a bond. All right. Right? We're all going to go towards chlorine. So the bond is polar. What about the molecule? Let me, let me redraw it. Maybe it'll help you because there aren't any lone pairs. I just found out. I just drew it, and I found out that there's no lone pairs. What is the molecule? A daisy? Why? Nonpolar or did you say polar? Did you say nonpolar? You think it's nonpolar or polar? Nonpolar. Okay. So Yes, if I draw this correctly, that there's no lone pairs here, we're going to have a nonpolar molecule, right? Why is that? Well, uh, let's take a look. What is going to win in a tug of war? They're all pulling equal opposite. It's kind of like that, um, that guy, like the really ruthless Russian czar, that used to take people and tie each one of their limbs to a horse and then smack the horse on the... Who was that? Anybody remember? What? Tsar Nicholas II, was that it? I think so, something like that. Yeah, they did it when? Oh, yeah, all right. Okay, so we got nonpolar. Here is a little thing that, oh, may just be on the AP exam. Boron can be extracted by the electrolysis of molten boron trichloride. Boron is an essential nutrient for many plants and is primary component of control rods and nuclear reactors. See that coming into play sometime. I don't know. It's like I said, it's just always something that you see on the big, long prompt. You know, I don't know. It means really nothing. But uh, OK, moving on, moving on. Valence bond merges. I don't know why I did that. Uh, all right. Okay, let me just take a look at this. All right, so we need to talk about our sigma pi bonds. This is all we're done. Yay. You want to know about sigma pi bonds? You're excited? All right. Valence bond theory says covalent bonding occurs when valence bond, valence orbitals of adjacent atoms overlap. Then two electrons opposite spin, one from each atom combined to form a bond. It's like a Velcro. No overlap, no bond sense. All right. Consider H2, Cl2, and HCl. So we have an unpaired electron in the 1s. We have Cl. We have one unpaired electron in the Cl. Oh, now we're talking about hybridization real quick. All right. If I have H2, uh-huh. I got a little overlap there. All right. Cl2, I got a little overlap there. HCl, sorry, well, I just put these in there. Now we'll talk about them. Orbitals overlap in a region responsible for the bond. Okay, so at this point, we're kind of talking about our wonderful hybridization. All right, our hybridization. And then we'll get into sigma and pi bonds. But we're talking about our, our hybridization, our SP. We know how to get the answer. Um, will there be maybe a multiple choice? Probably not. Just going to ask you for the hybridization. You either know it or you don't. Um, okay, so we have a little bit of overlap. Uh, H2, what is the hybridization of H2? S. What's the hybridization of Cl2? 
SP. What do we have for HCl? S and a P. All right, so we have two. All right, so let's take a look. There's always optimum distance. Ah, I have a feeling like I didn't want to give you your quiz today because I didn't talk about this graph. That was like, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, there is an optimum distance between two bonded nuclei. Uh, at this optimum distance, attractive, positive and negative, and repulsive, positive, positive and negative, negative forces balance. Ah, okay. So what are we trying to say here? Optimum distance, minimum potential energy. All right. So when they're coming down uh, this, so we have a lot of energy when they're what? A lot of en energy what? When they're what? Why, why do we have a high energy up here? What do you think? Why is this high up here? What is this graph showing you? Hi, but this is how you form So you got to form the bond. And when it reaches a little bit, it's getting closer, we have a ton of potential energy to create the bond. When they're by themselves, we have a lot of energy. All right, a lot. They're moving around like crazy, trying to find a pair, trying to find a pair. All right, uh, as they move, then they formed a bond, and guess what? Their energy is close to zero when it is H2. All right, so they're just a bond here, decreasing the amount of energy that they have in order to go into the bond. All right, an H2 molecule. That's it for me. What time is it?